Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure uh, to be with you to try to resume in eight minutes what do we currently know. This is my disclosure. First of all, I would like to say that what do we currently know comes from lessons I have uh, uh, learned from my mentor, Alain Carpentier, uh, since now 1983, with the first publication of the French Correction, and lessons from him are still valid, I can tell you. So what do we currently know? We will focus on two parts, anatomy, the valve and the round, and the role of multimodality imaging. Anatomy, Machel and tracuspid valve are AV valve, and it is clear the connection with the ventricle is very important to consider in the assessment with multimodality. We have two leaflets, the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet, but be aware the annulus is here, and take care about the indentation between P1, P2, and P2, P3, which is very important. However, one of the important things is this drawing with the annulus and the hinge with the AV junction at the posterior annulus, and it is very important in the cardioband uh, implantation. Around, the, we have risk of injuries. These drawings come from my, uh, the book of my friend, Manuel Antunes, and the anterior leaflet is around. You have the circumflex artery, which is very important to consider with this uh, coronary view. I recommend you a very nice paper just published by uh, Faletra uh, with, uh, regarding the macho valve annulus inside from non-invasive imaging techniques, and for sure it's very important to consider uh, CT scan in this field. What about the tricuspid valve? We have three leaflets, the anterior here, the posterior, and the septal leaflet, and uh, which is very important. We have to know some uh, around a structure for 3D landmarks and the risk of injuries. Aortic valve is here on the left, and uh, the coronary sinus, and most importantly, the right coronary artery here at this level, particularly at the level of the antero-posterior commissure. But this valve functioning as AV valve with closure opening, and it is very important to consider as a functional approach, which is one of the very important message from Carpentier. And this is very important to consider the distance and the aim of uh, closure, which is to restore a large surface of coaptation, which is one of the three golden rules, which again still are valid, to preserve or restore normal leaflet motion, to create a large surface of coaptation, and it is a good news for cardioband to remodel and stabilize the annulus. What about the multimodality objective? First of all, for patient screening and indication for intervention, echo plays a major role. Pre-procedural planning, particularly the selection of suitable patient, and in this field, CT scan is particularly important. Intraprocedural guidance and control is a key for uh, intraoperative echo, and particularly 3D and uh, sometimes fusion if you have in your center. And finally, don't forget the post-procedural follow-up long-term evaluation with echo. I recommend you a very good uh, paper just uh, published for the cardiac CT protocols for mitral and tracker speed valve repair and replacement who uh, summarize all the goals of uh, uh, the CT scan in this field. So in summary, for mitral regurgitation, echo is particularly important for MR severity, LV assessment, valve analysis, guiding and control, particularly with fusion. For CT scan, it is more important for valve analysis and particularly for annulus. And CMR is important for the LV assessment. I recommend you, again, this uh, very important and very nice paper from uh, Nina Wunderlich, which summarizes all these fields. What about the dysfunction? It's very important. Segmental analysis, type of dysfunction, classification based on leaflet motion, type 1, type 2, type 3A, type 3B, it is, again, still valid to communicate in a common language with your intervention. 
as Carl, uh, Dr. Maitra says and point out, it's very important to consider and to separate clearly the primary MR and secondary MR. Primary MR, we have degenerative valve like fibroelastic deficiency in old people and Barlow in young adults. In comparison with secondary MR, where the mechanism is more a ventricular uh, issue with a dilation and deformation. Example for 3D, the rule of 3D, like a simple P2 prolapse with two codal rupture, which is a very good uh, indication. More complex is a, a diffuse prolapse, like uh, here, type 2, A2, and P3, which can be more uh, difficult, but not contraindicated. Let me tell you something we have known from one or two years. The symmetrical barlow with mature annular disjunction with a typical central jet. And one, what we have learned recently is with one ring, we can uh, uh, fix the problem uh, in just uh, one hour. And uh, because you block the uh, ascension of the papillary muscle, and for mitral annular disjunction, maybe it could be a potential indication for cardioband annuloplasty. Still, we have the indication for surgery, like uh, endocarditis, for sure. And for uh, mitral annular calcification, it's a, also a contraindication for cardioband, which can be very well assessed by a 3D echo and with a CT scan where the indications for CT scan are summarized in this uh, slide. So in summary, for tricuspid regurgitation, echo is key for TR severity. Pepe told you the different grading, uh, the modern grading, and including the torrential. Guiding and control is very important. Valve analysis, we have seen that. For CT scan, uh, so it's very important for sizing. And for MRI, the right ventricular assessment is particularly key. So this is a, so very good, um, a very good paper. Uh, I recommend you uh, the good summarize of all the uh, role of multimodality imaging in the very nice issue of Jack Imaging and uh, Becky Ann. So 3D echo anatomy, the surgical view from the right atrium, anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet, septal leaflet, the right coronary artery, and uh, the aortic valve on the left, if you want to see the surgical view. However, with transcatheter option for guiding the interventionist, we prefer, as uh, mentioned by Agricola, to put the aortic valve uh, on the top. So finally, and the last slide, is a contemporary management of TIA based on these two very important papers. We have grade one, isolated TIA or concomitant TIA with uh, surgery. Phase two, grade two, isolated TR and concomitant TR with surgery. And three, with torrential TR and large re RV remodeling, which is considered as a, a transcatheter option, but maybe this uh, stage is too late. So in conclusion, we need to understand clearly anatomy for intervention. Multimodality imaging is key for success of implantation in a common language with a hard team approach. Thank you very much for your attention.